Blind love, love is blind. It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'm wearing my I'm judgmental shirt. Do you know why I'm wearing this shirt? I wear my judgmental shirt because you know why? Janice is judgmental. I know, let me tell you. I couldn't marry nobody like that. Okay, I asked my husband this where I said, Mike, I reviewed this show called Love Blind, Love Blind, Love is Blind. And he said, what's that about? I said, you know, they meet, they talk for a couple of days, and then they propose to get married. Then they get married. I said, would you do that? And he said, oh, no, I couldn't do nothing like that. I said, you got to see her, right, Mike? <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, baby, I got to look at her first. <laughs> I'm like that. I can't do it. And you know what? It's amazing in the groups. The people are talking about, oh, he's so shallow. This one's so shallow. Uh, she's so uh, superficial. Baby, let me tell you, I am a shallow, superficial admitter this boy. You know why? The teeth has got to be right, okay? I can't do no raggedy teeth. Okay, the lips got to be right. I don't do soup lips. You know what soup lips are if you're from the islands. Okay, the eyes got to be right. I can't do no crazy eyes like Shane and like Mark. Okay, Mark the shark. Okay, the hands got to be big, nice, soft hands. Okay, let me tell you, stuff got uh, no dreads, no, no big old beards down here, no, no, no cornrows, none of that stuff, honey. I need be a clean cut and girl. If he is short, you know, like Michael and Mary, that first that little nipple, I couldn't do, I couldn't do. But you know what? I compliment the people that does love is blind and marry that first sight. You're right, girl. I love him better than marry that first sight. Maybe this can replace marry that first sight because I, I am so over marry that first sight. And I'm hearing that they're already review, uh, recording, taping season three of love is blind. So, hey. I might be able to finally give up Married at First Sight. The only thing I don't like is they give you five episodes at one time and you basically have to binge watch. And I can't binge watch because I need to talk through the shows. And, you know, I started taking notes on episode two and then I had to stop. And I'm like, no, I need to record this because I need to talk through it because my review the way I do my reviews different from how other reviewers review shows, because here it's really a classroom. You are really learning and you're understanding. When he say this, this is what he mean. Uh-uh, girl, he's an atheist. You're a Christian. Why are you still sitting there talking to him? Girl, get up and walk out. And that's when I had to stop. Like, no, no, no. I need to talk through this while I am reviewing this, okay? So I am enjoying it, but there is just so much content uh, in here. I just wish they did not release five, 10 episodes at one time and just do one a week. Listen, guess what today is? Today is February 22nd, 2022. And I've been forgetting to mention my 2222 two, two, two shirts, okay? So if you run over to Etsy, I have dating 22222 two, two, Tuesday, Tuesday shirt. I have all types of shirts over there on Etsy. Teaching second grade on Tuesday, 22222. Two, two, two. Okay, happy Tuesday, 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 22222. Two, 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 two. Uh, cool Tuesday, 22. Two, Two 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 two. So run over to Etsy, check that out. I think one of them is on sale, and of course my uh, take your cookie off the table shirt is coming soon. I hope I get it this week. I think I'm getting it this week. Um, so be sure to check that out. And of course, of course, my newest book, take your cookie off the table book. I love you. I love you. Okay. Let's get into it. I had to stop. I, I was taking notes and then I had to stop. I said, no, 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 I can't take notes. I need to sit here and talk this through because this is a classroom. Okay. Church girls want to get married too. It's really a classroom because I really need you to learn. And you know what I'm, 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 I'm so happy about is this book, 23 times the guys you might mean. Every woman needs to get this book because, because you can learn so much about the different types of guys. Okay. So it begins with, uh, Danielle and Kyle. I think his name was right. And she say, he's not only my fiance, he's my best friend. I threw the phone down at that time. I threw the phone down because how is somebody you just met your best friend? You spend 10 days talking to a man and all of a sudden he's your best friend? Let me tell you what I don't like about Kyle and um, Danielle. They are two emotional people. They are, they are people who trauma bond in dating. 
okay? They're, they're trauma bonded because you just met this man, but he's your best friend. You don't have no other best friend that you've been talking to all this time that this man you just met and you're talking to for 10 days is your best friend. These two for me are very emotional and see emotional people always get in trouble because they're too emotional. They're based in their decisions on emotions and not necessarily facts and being calculated and, and, and having data and stuff like that because they're all emotional and, and nothing is wrong with emotional with the exception when it's out of control. And to me, to me, just by what I'm seeing with Kyle, with first episode, I think they were okay. But the second episode when she's talking about this is my best friend, I love you and all this. Uh, uh, okay. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it, Danielle, but this is because, you know, she's, she's struggled with her weight. So has the other girl and you just want somebody to accept you and love you for you, but you want that person to change who they are and what they are. This is Danielle. Okay. She's, um, she's healthy as the old church folks would say. Uh, she has struggled with her weight. And I'm seeing that on the show. A lot of the girls have struggled with their weight and they want a man to overlook their weight and love them for who they are on the inside. And I'm saying, girl, don't do that. You want somebody that's going to love you because even if you have gained some pounds, because listen, what's going to happen when you get pregnant? Huh? What's going to happen when you get pregnant? So the ladies that are struggling with your weight, <clears throat> okay, I have been blessed that I have never struggled with my weight. I ran track. I, I, I'm a very much on my weight. Um, I've weighed the same thing for over 10 years. I was when my husband married me. I, I've been the same weight except until last year when he took me down to this place with all this good food for our eighth year anniversary and I fell off the bandwagon ever since and I have to get back on. But I know exactly what I need to do. If I go outside and run around for an hour, I, I drop five pounds because I have a good metabolism. But ladies, for those of you who are struggling with your weight and you're struggling with whatever, you need to find somebody that's gonna love you and accept you for your weight. You don't want this, this, oh, this delusional thing that women do and men do Love me for who I am on the inside. Well, who you are on the inside is coming out on the outside. Okay, it's coming out on the outside. Don't You don't want somebody to psych themselves into loving you. You need to love them for you. Even if you're 500 pounds, you need to find somebody that's going to love you for your 500 pounds. Okay, not overlook the 500 pounds. And I was kind of, I was like, girl, what, what you mean? That's your best friend. You want to tell me all this time you ain't had no best friend? That this man you just met is your best friend? And you in love already? You know why they're in love? It's emotional. I don't think they're in love. I think they are emotional. And you've been talking to this person for 10 days and all your emotions are running high. And you think you are in love, but you're not in love because you really do not know who this person is. Here is Kyle. I think he's decent looking, but you know, I think he's struggled with his weight and he's had issues being accepted and being loved. And my thing is find somebody that's going to accept you and love you for you, fat and all. Okay. Fat and all. Okay. <laughs> because in the end, it don't matter if you gain 10 pounds or whatever. Of course it matters because, you know, we want to be healthy and the best us and everybody ain't supposed to be skinny danielle and the jukiki girl mm -mm, you could tell their their structure their structures are not for tiny girls okay they're not for skinny girls you can look at a person like i can look at somebody like danielle and what's her the indian girl i can look at them and tell they're not supposed to be skinny danielle and the indian girl i'm gonna get her name these girls are girls who are more, uh, more, um, thicker. Is that a, is that a safe word? Okay. Let's look at Kara, Kara. 
I can look at Kara, Kara, and tell that based on her structure, she's a she's a skinny girl. She's a little girl. But if I look at Danielle and the Indian girl, you can tell based on their structure that they're not supposed to be tiny girls. These girls are obviously supposed to be girls who are a little bit more voluptuous. Okay, here she go. What's her name? Depti. Depti. She's not, she's not a tiny girl. You can look at her bone structure and tell. She is not supposed to be skinny. And this is why I think these girls need to accept who they are. They're not supposed to be skinny. They're supposed to be girls that that's a little, little bit more thicker. That's their structure. That's their bone structure. That's how God made them. Love you for who you are. I'm not saying be unhealthy because when you go, your doctor will let you know you, uh, -uh you need to lose 15 pounds. So it was kind of, kind of blew my mind. And that's why I like, girl, no, no girl, you got to get up and talk. But anyways, I kept on going and, um, they're talking and they're in love and I love you and all of this. And you're so wonderful and so on and so forth. Then we get to Ayana and, um, what's his name? Jared. I like them initially, but I feel like Jared is an F boy. Okay. Now, please do not tell me what's going on. I don't want to know. We're on episode two. I don't want nothing. I don't want to know anything beyond episode two. We're in episode two, okay? So they're talking and she asks, have we have we had the sex talk already? And he's like, well, uh, no. And, you know, they're talking about kissing and she's like, well, you know, saliva freaks me out. And I'm like, high five, girl. Yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I just don't understand how all these people going around swapping spit. I just, I, mm, mm, I cannot, okay? All right, let me tell you. Mm. I got married when I was almost 36 and I have kissed less than five guys. Not only have I kissed less than five guys, but I've done other stuff with less than five guys. You can't even get a Sunday school class out of the guys I've been intimate with. Because I, 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 uh -huh. I just don't believe in going around dipping your mouth in other people's. <laughs> dipping your mouth in other people's mouth. And all this kissing in the morning when you wake up, does real, <laughs> does real people do that? I just cannot. My husband already know. Mm -mm. First thing my do get up is go right to the bathroom. Okay, they come back and cuddle up with me. Okay, but uh 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 uh. So I totally agree with with that. And then he says, you know, him being intimate has has to do with a lot of kissing and touching and and stuff like that. And they're talking about how amazing they've it's been that you know they've been talking and they feel like they've known each other forever. And I say yes, that's what happened when you spend a lot of time talking and you get your, your emotions are all running high and girls, this is why I tell you in my book, when you are <clears throat> dating a guy, do not spend all day, every day on the phone with him because you are manipulating your emotions and your emotions will make you think you are in love when you're really not is in love. Okay. This is Ayana. You see her bone structure. She's supposed to be tiny. So, of course, you're going to feel like you know this person forever. And you know what I said, too? You can do this in the dating world. That's Jared. You can do this in the dating world. You know why we don't do all this talking in the dating world? Is because we're emotional. We want to jump in the bed. No, no, no. <clears throat> what they are actually doing is gathering data. They are gathering data about each other and learning about each other because you need the data to make an informed decision. So when you spend all this time talking to someone, yeah, it's going to feel like it's going to feel like you've known this person forever because you're doing something that we don't normally do in this world no more because you're on you you know everything is just so social and you're falling in the bed and you're kissing and you you're doing all of this stuff when in fact what you need to do is to gather data so that you have enough data to make an informed decision. So then Jared said, yesterday was Mallory and today it's Ayana. 
I love this because ladies, this is what dating really is. You have more than one girl or guy you are dating and you're weighing the data you are learning and you are finding out based on what you are learning about them. And so with that, you're supposed to weigh it. Weigh the data. And I, I actually feel like Mallory, I could be wrong, but just based on the conversation, I think Mallory seemed like she would be a better fit. Okay. So before I think before this, let me go back to my notes. Before this, Jared and Mallory, or was it after? Okay, it was after. He's talking about he comes in, I had a dream about you. And I think that was his low key, low key. Let me know what you think. I think it's low key him trying to find out what she looks like. Of, of course, you can make you, if you're really into voices and so you can, you know, who's black, who's white, who's of a nas different national. I'm very good with voices uh, and I'm very good. I can tell based on what somebody say, um, if they're educated or not. I can tell the, the different voices. I can tell you're from, I can tell you're from the islands. You're from Africa. I can tell you're from, you're, you're white, you're black. I can tell um, Egyptian. I really, I know voices. I have an ear for voices, okay? And so I can basically tell what a person is and who a person is. So he's telling her that I had a dream about you and blah, 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 blah. And he seemed to be very emotional. But I, I noticed that in this episode, she calls him Joe Beer, some beer. Uh, she was kind of holding back. And I'm wondering, is she coming to terms with Maybe he's not the right fit for me. Because I noticed in this episode, she was holding back a lot. Let me know what y'all think. I'm just talking about episode two, please. Okay. So then they sat there and they're talking and she's she seemed deep in thought. And, and uh, he's talking about what kind of ring you like. And she's like, she really... Love gold and traditional. So like me, I love the traditional, but I, my, mine is a, a white gold. And um, then they're leaving. She says, sweet dreams. And he said, well, hopefully you dream about me. And she said, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is when I had to stop because Shan, Shan and the atheists. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? What are you doing? Is this is this Salvador's the atheist? What are you doing? This is Shane. Sh Shane is it Shana? Okay. Shana is a pretty girl, right? She's going through a love triangle with uh 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 Natalie. And uh, Shane. Now, personally, for me, let me take these couple commercials. I think Shane, Shane, Shana is a best is a better fit. I just don't think. I just don't think Natalie is the right fit for him. I think Natalie is the typical woman dating. <clears throat> She is so typical and typical in that you put all your eggs in one basket. And we know over here at the church girl, we do not believe in putting all of our eggs in our one basket, honey, because if that one basket falls, guess what's going to happen? It's going to crush at, uh, it's going to crash and it's going to break. And, um, you're not going to have any more eggs. I'm trying to find uh, the picture here. 
Salvador is the atheist, right? I'm kind of surprised. I was really surprised when he said he's an atheist. But, you know, I think a lot of people grow up in the church and then this is why I don't think, I don't believe in forcing kids to go to church. I think you need to explain to children um, what church is about. I think that you don't need to just have kids going to church. I think you need to balance it out so their whole lives is not church. And I, th because even in the black community, we see that a lot. We see that a lot where they grow up and they don't they they don't want to have anything to do with church, especially in the generation before me and my generation, right? I see a lot of people who in these two generations kind of turn their back. And I, I don't think it's necessarily turning your back on the church. On God, I think it's turning their backs on church. And this is why we need to make sure we we teach our kids balance. So Shayna and Salvador, I think it's Salvador. I was just so shocked about their playing. Have you ever, ever? And so the question came up, have you ever, uh, let me rewind a little bit. Have you ever slept with somebody of the same sex? And she says, wait a minute, here it is. She says, let me go back. She says, no, she's, let me make sure I get the name right. Cause I don't want to say the wrong name. Oh, Kyle, Kyle, I'm sorry. I said Salvador, Kyle. So Kyle and I have extreme views on religion. So Kyle and, 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 am I saying it right? Let me go back, girl. I don't want to miss, miss it up. Yes, we're talking about the atheists, right? So Kyle and Shayna is talking about the faith and the religion and stuff like that. And she's Christian and he's, he's Catholic. And he was raised in a Catholic home. And she was raised Christian. Come to find out Kyle is, I said Salvador, excuse me. He's an atheist. She's Christian. And she's asking, well, what if, if, if we're at the table with our kids and we want to say grace and uh, guess what he said, he going to burp or pass gas and say grace who? Then she asks how, um, if he would allow her to raise the children in church. And he's like, well, of course, you know, and they could grow up and choose the way I did. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's where I had to stop. That's where I had to stop. Cause I'm like, I need to do this live. I need to watch through this live because Christian girls, Christian girls, right? Born again. If your faith is important to you, why are you over here talking to some man that don't believe in your God? And I mean, this is any religion. I don't care what religion it is. If your faith, ladies, is important to you, the minute a man, you find out that a man is not of your faith and believe the way you do. Tell me why you still talking. Why are you still sitting in there talking to him? Shouldn't you get up and walk away? Because if your faith is important to you. And Kyle and Shayna, it is, this is proof that Shayna, that your faith is not important to you. And let me go ahead and say, any, any born again woman that marries a man that is not born again, what it is saying is your faith is not important to you. You don't love Jesus. You, you don't love the word. Your faith is not important. You are not rooted and grounded in your faith. And your kitty is more important to you. Because there's no way your faith and your love for Christ and the kingdom and wanting to raise children up for Christ is important to you that you're going to overlook all of this just say so you can have a man. I've known so many girls that have done that and they have lived to regret it. They have lived to regret it 
because three months right after all that passion and all that stuff come on down and reality hits you in your face, you're going to start having regrets. Because in this book I wrote about in The Naked Wife, I wrote about a young lady that raised in the church, you know, raised in the church, went to college, met and fell in love, didn't tell the parents she was getting married, eloped. Everything was okay, she said. Then they graduate, start living in the real world, and he's pressuring her about kids. And she's like, well, she's, it's, it hit her like, wait a minute. I want to raise my children for Christ. Some of my most wonderful times as a child was in Sunday school, and I want that for my kids. So he kept pressuring her. He had their religious people come over, try to talk to her. So one day they get in this big fight because now, now ladies being delusional, he wants her to convert. And she's like, no, I'm not converted. And she said that day they had a fight. She said her life flashed in front of her. She said hell flashed in front of her because this man wanted her to reject Christ. There's a word. And she said hell hell flashed in front of her and he said you gonna convert now or get out or whatever and she grabbed her purse she was like i would never convert i don't care i care i'm leaving everything kill me if you must but i will never convert and she said she grabbed her purse ran out the house and called her daddy and her father came and drove all night to come get her if your faith is important to you shana why are you over here talking to some man about what kids and how you going to allow me to do this with the kid? No, he's not going to allow you, girl. They are God haters. They don't love your Jesus. All these, these people of different faith that you want to marry and build a life with and spend the rest of your life with, you need to realize that they don't love your Jesus. So if you love your Jesus like you say you do, when you meet a man that don't love your Jesus, the right thing you need to do is to do what? You need to walk away. That's if your Jesus is more important to you. And that is the test that's letting you know that you are all talk and your Jesus is not important to you. Because if your Jesus is important to you, you would never put anyone above your Jesus. So Shayna, when he say he's an atheist, that was your cue to get up and walk away, baby. Girls that's dating for marriage, when a man said to her he's an atheist or he's of a different faith, that is your cue to get up and walk away. That's if you love your Jesus more than you love your kitty. <laughs> okay? If you love your Jesus more than you love your kitty, you will get up and walk away. Because your faith is important to you. Because your marriage is not just about you. It's about children. It's about the next generation. It's about the rest of your life. Because God's intention is that we spend the rest of our lives with this person. And then a lot of Christian women, you marry these men and try to convert them. And what happened? They, they convert you. And you walk away from your faith. You walk away from your Christ. You're not living like you were supposed to. You're not worshiping. You're not going to church. You're not fellowshipping. Because you think you can get him to do what you want him to do. No, no, no. Walk away. It's simple as walking away. And I've told you guys in, in, in my husband list, I'm actually working on a book for you guys. The number one thing was he must be born again. That was my number one. If he was not born again, that was it. Goodbye. Because my Jesus is important to me. I love him. He's been good to me. I, in my devotional this morning, I'm working on, an, on an, a book about praise and worship. And I printed out 10 pages because I just felt like loving on God this morning. 
I just, I just knelt down and I was just loving on him. Lord, I love you. You've been so good to me. You've been so merciful. You have kept us. You have blessed us. We are healthy. We are wealthy. We have everything we need. We're not in need of any good thing. God, you've been so good to me. You know why? Because I love him. I love him. And that's where I had to stop because I say, I really need to talk about this because they sh on these shows, they show women and both women and men compromising all the time on what's important to you. And if your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is important to you, the minute you find out a man is not born again, you will walk away. <clears throat> because your faith is important to you. I love you, girl. I have to run. I'm going to stop it right here, but I'm going to pick it up. But I just really had to stop taking notes. And I was like, no, no, no. I really need to talk through this because I know so many women who compromise on their faith to have a man. So I know a lot of women and we need to stop it. If your faith is important, your faith might not be important. Now, obviously, Shayna's faith is important to her because she was engaged, right? She was engaged. And 40 days before the marriage, she called it off. She said, God says no. Then, then we find out he was controlling. God did not tell you no, ma'am. Stop lying on God, Shayna. There are certain things you see and you know God don't have to tell you because you see it in front of you. You see a man that's controlling. Walk away, girl. God don't have to tell you no. Your common sense should tell you this man is controlling. It's only going to get worse when you get married and he got you all alone in that house by yourself. You don't need God to tell you no, girl. But I have to go. I love you. Be sure to show me love. Listen, pick up this book. 23 types of guys. You mind? There's a lot of different types of guys. I love you. I have to run. And remember my Patreon. Check out my t-shirts on Etsy, girl. Check them out. Love you. Bye.